Nuclear. Nuclear energy. Nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion. Fusion. Uh, fusion energy. Fusion. 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 Fusion everywhere. Ten times hotter than the heart of the sun. Is there a way we could build a sun on Earth? Sure. If this is really the beginning of something huge, it would change the world. Thank you for... So, what is fusion energy and why is it important? Alright, so... Doctor, we have a successful fusion reaction. So for the video this week, I thought I would share a little bit about the place where I work, which is Near Star Fusion, a private fusion energy company located in Virginia. Along with that, I thought why not share a little bit about how fusion energy works, why it's important, why we're working on it, and some other related questions and topics. But to help me do this, I thought I'd bring in some backup. So I got Chris Farinetta, vice president and co-founder of Near Star Fusion. If you follow me on my other social media accounts, you've probably seen Chris before when I share some of the Nearstar content on my personal pages. Chris has a ton of experience within clean tech, aerospace, and fusion. So I thought, why not sit down for a quick interview slash conversation and work through some of these topics. But of course, I will stick around to jump in here and there through the interview to go in more detail about certain aspects of the conversation and to address any questions that you may have um, related to Nearstar and just fusion energy in general. Also, we're gonna cover a lot of the basics, so you don't really need a ton of knowledge going into this video. Um, we're gonna try to address some of the basic questions and hopefully explain them pretty well. If you have any more detailed questions or you kind of want me to do a more in-depth video, I would love to. Just let me know down in the comments um, if you have a chance to watch the whole video. And yeah. So with that, uh, let's start the video. Fusion energy is basically you're, you're taking light atoms, mm -hmm. you're, you're pushing them together, and you're getting them to fuse together. Mm -hmm. And, and to make a, a heavier atom. In that process, it re releases a tremendous amount of energy. Mm -hmm. um, the sun is uh, effectively a gravitational fusion power yeah. charge. Okay, so atoms are composed of a nucleus and one or more electrons. And the nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. So while Chris was talking, you saw a graphic of a fusion reaction occurring. Now when looking at our fuel source, deuterium and tritium, Deuterium has one neutron, one proton, and one electron. Tritium has two neutrons, one proton, and one electron. Now when you heat atoms up at high enough temperatures like they are at the core of the sun, they lose their electrons and form a hot cloud of charged particles called a plasma. So we get rid of, oh, we get rid of that. Now the goal here is to get these two nuclei to fuse. But as we all know, like charges repel. So you have to get them close enough together to react and overcome the electric repulsion and allow the nuclear forces to take over and form a new nucleus. So when it does work out, these two atoms combine and create helium, which has two neutrons, two protons, and a lone neutron. And this is the kind of reaction which mostly powers the sun and stars. And this is why Chris referred to the sun as a fusion power plant. And it is sustained by the immense pressure, temperature, and gravitational force in the core of the sun allowing the fusion to happen. But as you can guess, it's pretty difficult to do because you need to engineer a system which could recreate these conditions on Earth. So this is why you may have heard the harnessing the power of the sun in a bottle type phrase. So what's important to know is how much energy is released from this type of reaction. And when making comparisons, the amount of energy a fusion reaction releases is on the order of millions of times greater than the energy released in a chemical reaction of a fossil fuel. And it sounds nice and all, but like I said, it's not very easy to do. Why is it important? Mm -hmm. It's effectively a clean, limitless source of energy for the planet. And it's an energy source that if we're able to make it work here on the surface of the Earth, we, we would have maximum power 24-7 mm -hmm. with a minimum amount of impact on the environment. And, you know, it's a funny thing, there's really no such thing as clean energy. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, the process of making solar panels is very dirty. Mm -hmm. The process of making batteries. And so everything has their effect on the environment, um, you know, and hopefully with, with clean, cleaner energy, mm -hmm. you know, it has that much less effect yeah. on, on the environment. And so certainly fusion has the potential to be the cleanest, effectively and limitless source source of energy yeah 
So then the great benefits of Fusion are the very high energy density. Yes. It's always on, it's not like renewable. Um, right. At least maybe in the future we have better battery storage capabilities, but right now we don't. Right. And also the low environmental impact. And like you said, right. all energy sources have some environmental impact, but for Fusion it's a lot less relative to everything else. Yes, absolutely. And again, you know, it's when you look at the footprint, when you've got you know, utility scale, you know, think about how much area a solar farm would take up when yep. it's producing you know, tens of megawatts of energy and mm -hmm. it's only doing that during the day. Yeah. So then you've got to have a utility, you know, giant battery bank. Mm -hmm. And so li literally with it, with a fusion power plant, you could have, you could be producing gigawatts in the same footprint as, uh, you know, a conventional power plant. Yeah. The wonderful thing there is that it makes the grid very, very resilient. You, you're not having to string, you know, hundreds of miles of uh, utility lines, yeah. which are very expensive yeah. to, to, to serve renewables. Mm -hmm. Again, it's always on. It's, mm -hmm. You're getting maximum power 24-7. Yeah. So I've also heard you talk about um, how useful renewables and fission will be transitioning to fusion in the future when we have it. So maybe could you explain um, kind of the importance and how like we're not against renewables in a way. No, like, yeah. We're, we're, like it's just eventually we do want fusion, but right now we have to use what we have. You, you, you always want to have an energy mix. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, in clean energy, there's no silver bullet. It's going to yeah. take time for fusion power plants to be built mm -hmm. worldwide. Yeah. And so, you know, what does that mean? That means that we're gonna, we're gonna still need uh, fossil fuels yeah. for a long time. Uh, we need to use as much uh, wind and solar as we can. Mm -hmm. We need to use as much fission yeah. as we can. And mo modern fission, yeah. or, uh, power plants that are extremely safe mm -hmm. and don't uh, produce as much, as much waste. We need to recycle that waste. Yeah. Um, Just want to jump in and explain that nuclear fission is the nuclear energy which is commonly used today. While fusion is the process of taking lighter atoms and fusing them into heavier ones, fission is the process of taking heavier atoms and splitting them into lighter ones. Interestingly enough, nuclear fission is the process which provides us clean energy and is also the same process which nuclear weapons and atomic bombs rely on. All right, let's get back to the video. And, uh, you know, again, it's, we just, we need to stop being lazy mm -hmm. as far as innovating with energy is concerned. The, the money hasn't been spent to improve efficiency. And that's a, actually efficiency overall. Mm -hmm. uh, how we use energy, when we use energy, mm -hmm. is another big, that's another big clean tech segment of the market, is yeah. just using energy more efficiently. Yeah. And having the tools to do that. And actually it's the easiest technology to address. It's the lowest hanging fruit yeah. on the energy tree. Yeah. And so what are some of the fuels or where would we get these fuel sources to power these fusion reactors to get fusion energy? The main source you can get both uh, deuterium and lithium. Mm -hmm. You would then process into uh, tritium mm -hmm. from, from the ocean. And what's really nice about that is that the ocean covers most of the planet. <laughs> yeah. So not any one country has a monopoly yeah, on, on, the fuel on, source. on the fuel source. Yeah. Now, there is, uh, it's not easy to make tritium. You need to have refined lithium-6, and the process to do that is not easy. Yeah. And we don't yet have the infrastructure in place to mass produce it. Yeah. But, I mean, that's all part of the investment that needs to be made. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, we also need to build fusion power plants. And yeah. You know, when we're successful uh, in developing a uh, economical and reliable fusion power plant, mm -hmm. there's all this infrastructure that needs to be put in place to make all of that work and work yeah. on an economical basis. Yeah. Do we have fusion energy today? Um, well, yes, we do. With with the sun, mm -hmm. the sun is a fusion power plant. We're able to achieve fusion reactions. The problem is that we're not able yet to get more energy out of the overall reaction than is what is put in. Now, what happened at the recently at the National Ignition Facility mm -hmm. is they achieved net gain. 
So I actually made a video giving a short rundown of the breakthrough at the National Ignition Facility. So I'm going to throw that in right here in the video. Hello everybody and welcome to the My name is Alexander Bizzotti. There are many different fusion approaches which are being investigated, but the team at NIF used a laser-based system. The team at NIF ran the experiment December 5th by firing its 192 laser beams at the fuel pellet, and from it, they got a net fusion fuel gain. This is a historic milestone, but it's important to mention this is net fusion fuel gain. This means that they achieved net energy gain relative to how much energy was inputted to the fuel not how much energy was used to power the lasers. When looking simply at how much energy was used to power the laser beams relative to how much we got out, we did not achieve a net gain. And this is because the lasers are not 100% efficient. But this is still a major breakthrough because it demonstrates that gaining energy from a fusion reaction on Earth is possible. And this proves out the fundamental physics which until now has never been done before. There's a lot more work to be done, but this is a monumental step in the right direction. The other thing that's really exciting for us is that that's a pulsed approach. Mm -hmm. We very strongly believe that you know uh, the, the pulsed approach is the way to go mm -hmm. because it, the power plant is less complex yeah. than let's say if you're uh, with magnetic confinement where you're using a magnetic field to control the, the, the plasma. Mm -hmm. This, I feel like everyone who like hears about fusion is like, it sounds amazing, perfect, why don't we have it, or why don't we do it? And I feel like a lot of people don't understand how difficult it is. Oh, yeah. It's... So could you maybe talk about why is it so difficult, and what are some of the big issues we run into? Well, it's, it comes down to the fact that the science of plasma physics is uh, not complete, but we've learned so much. Mm -hmm. We, humanity, have been working on fusion energy since the 1950s. Yeah. And we had just come off of developing the fission bomb and, and having nuclear fission power plants. And then we developed the fusion bomb, mm -hmm. right? And they're sort of like, oh, you know, well, you know, it's, it can't be that much harder yeah. to, uh, to be able to do it in a controlled environment and within a power plant. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reality is, is that we didn't know what we didn't know. Mm -hmm then you know modeling and then trying to understand what's going on with plasma because yeah. it's very very complicated you can't put plasma in a, in a bottle you yeah. need the only way you can control it mm -hmm. is with a magnetic field and uh, it dissipates very very rapidly it's very hard to produce the other thing is it's very very hard to model mm -hmm. in a computer and so think about this. you're trying to model plasma with 1950s <laughs> computers yeah, yeah. And so what has happened is that over this time, mm -hmm. we've kept at it, and we've, we've gotten better at the, the science, mm -hmm. and we have an extremely cheap, ubiquitous computing power, highly powerful computers. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing is, you know, st we still have a lot to learn. We yeah. still have a, a, a ways to go. But that said, you know, and, and it's worth the investment. It's yeah. worth the investment from, from the government. It's worth the investment from the private sector. And if we don't... If you don't make the investment, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Do you ever get like the comments where it's like, this is way too far out to be working on now? And what's kind of your response to that where people are like, oh, this is like a dreamy cause? Or, Well, you know, that's really a problem with human civilization. We really don't, especially in the, the corporate world, I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> companies don't really plan further out than five years. Mm -hmm. And so we're, you know, we're very short-sighted, and we, again, human civilization has not been very innovative in the field of energy. Mm -hmm. We've gotten lazy yeah. because we have cheap uh, hydrocarbons. Mm -hmm. But the problem with these, you know, this cheap uh, hydrocarbon energy mm -hmm. is that we don't pay the real true cost of it. Yeah. We don't pay for the impact that it has on the environment. Uh, in the extraction and refinement process, and we don't pay for the damage it does when we, you know, we effectively use the air that we breathe yeah. as an open sewer. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, effectively what we're doing, what we're starting to do now, is repower the planet. So uh, and that, what's nice is that we'll have a minimum 
of impact on the environment, but we'll have a maximum amount of energy that we can use to do other things and, and yeah. improve pretty much the quality of life. We have the potential to improve the quality of life of all 8 billion people on the planet. Where, so where could everyone like follow the company, check us out, stay up to date with what we're doing, well, what we're up to? Yeah, go to nearstarfusion.com. Uh, you know, feel free to link to me on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm Chris J. Farinetta. I have a second cousin, Chris Anthony Farinetta. Uh, uh, but there's only two Chris Farinettas, so uh, Nice. Well, perfect. I, I'm the one that's not in software. I'm the big <laughs> uh, And then, yeah, yeah, we have Facebook. And, yeah. yeah. I'll link those in the description. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And then also your star fusion back. Yeah. Nice. All right. Cool. I think that's good then. Perfect. All right. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want this? You want it? Uh, sure. Start? I could drink it then.